Bionicle Chronicles 1 Tale of the Toa Chapters 15 and 16 with the canon version of the Shadow Toa fight Taken from an official Bionicle style guide and edited into the book by Turaga Nuva Tahu, look out! The Fire Toa turned just in time to raise his sword against the onslaught. The face of his attacker was hidden behind a blackened, pitted mask, and black smoke billowed from its sword. Tahu held the stranger off as best he could. He channeled the power of his flame through his fire sword, pointing it toward the sandy ground beneath his attacker. It instantly crystallized into glass and broke under the stranger's weight. The attacker plummeted out of sight. But Tahu barely had time enough to smile before the stranger leaped out of the pit. Hate to shatter your illusions, it said in a sizzling, crackling voice. But it will take more than that to get rid of me. The words only drove Tahu to greater fury. He shot white-hot flames out of the sword, but his movements were too fast, careless, striking the walls and boulders of the cavern until sparks flew in all directions, showering over the other Toa. Take care, Tahu, the attacker spoke again, lest the fire of your anger blaze out of control. Tahu gritted his teeth. We'll see how you like my fire now, he said. He pointed his sword at the stony cavern floor. Fire poured from the end, melting the rock into steaming, glowing lava. Brother Tahu, Onua's voice sounded distant, almost lost in the bubbling sound of the boiling lava. Watch what you're doing. You'll endanger us all! Tahu's mysterious opponent leaped off its rock and surfed across the bubbling lava. Its smile broadened. Come, give in to the flame, it whispered. Let it consume you and all you hold dear. I know you can feel it burning deep inside. Tahu gasped, startled out of his own anger. What sort of enemy was this? He looked around for help and saw that five more attackers had suddenly appeared, as if out of the shadows themselves, each moving in on a different Toa. What are you? Tahu whispered. Just the sight of these dark impostures filled him with disgust and dread. Don't you know, Toa of Fire? hissed the shadow Tahu. I am you, the part of you that you try to hide. I am your power, your ambition and my flames are not held in check by conscience. I will rule, or Mata Nui will burn. We are what you wish you could be, Shadow Gali said, in a voice like the slithering of water snakes. Victory is the only thing that matters. Who cares if the oceans are thrown into turmoil, or the rivers are bent and twisted to serve my ends? What possible difference could that make to me? No, Gali shouted, to use my power without regard to what it could do to the world around me. No, spirit, I reject you. We know all about rejection, don't we, brother? Shadow Kopaka said softly. We drive others away, freeze them out, so the opportunity will never arise to fail them. And we would fail them, wouldn't we? Then they would abandon us and we would be all alone, brother. Kopaka raised his sword of ice. I am not your brother, he said, sending a blast of pure cold at his counterpart. But the ice passed through the shadow of Kopaka's form as if the Dark One was not there. Toa, these things are not real, Onua said. They are just illusions. Ignore them. Always so wise, are we? Shadow Onua responded. Always so strong, are we? Strong enough, perhaps, to reach up and pull down the sun. Then we could walk on the surface like all the others do, see like they do, and not be blinded by infernal light. How sweet that would be! In the far corner, Lewa did a flip over his double, but the shadow Lewa merely dissolved and reformed in front of the Toa once again. Why do you run, brother? Shadow Lewa said. We don't need them, any of them. The important thing is to have fun. Let the other Toa worry about their petty responsibilities. There is a whole world to explore. 
faced with these dark reflections of themselves, even the Toa began to know doubt. Little by little, they backed away, as their shadow selves grew stronger and more insistent. Only Pohatu stood his ground, looking at his duplicate as if it were something he had stepped in. So, what's your story? Pohatu grumbled. I don't have one, Shadow Pohatu answered. I am invisible, unwanted. Onua is wiser, Tahu more powerful, Gali more in harmony with her world. What am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Pohatu chuckled. Am I supposed to be scared by all that? Everybody has doubts and fears. Everybody worries sometimes that maybe they'll lose their friends or screw something up. But you get up and you keep going and you take the chance. The Toa of Stone took a step forward. And amazingly, the shadow Pohatu retreated. That's called being alive, spirit, Pohatu continued, as relentlessly as a hammer against a stubborn rock. Something you wouldn't understand. I don't run from my fears. I use them to keep me going, keep me striving to achieve something more. Pohatu reached out and plunged his hand into the midst of the shadow. You can't scare me, spirit. You are me. With a cry, the shadow disappeared inside Pohatu. The other Toa stopped, stared, and halted their retreat. We cannot reject these things, Gali whispered. We must accept that they are part of ourselves. Parts we wish did not exist, Kopaka agreed, but we are strong enough to master them. And master them we shall, Tahu said. With that, the Shadow Toa gave a mournful wail and began to break apart. In seconds, their substance had turned to mist, and the mist had vanished inside the bodies of the Toa. Gali was the first to notice that the atmosphere in the chamber had changed. It's gone, she said softly. The evil in this place is gone. You mean we've won? Tahu asked. Makuta chose to fight us with our own fears, Kopaka said. A calculated gamble that might well have worked, if not for Pohatu. Unfriendly types don't bother me, Kopaka, Pohatu replied, gentle laughter in his tone. After all, I hang around with you, don't I? The Toa stood there for a long moment, staring at one another. Then, as a group, they collapsed wearily to the ground. After catching his breath, Tahu sat up and glanced at Onua, who was watching the others thoughtfully. What do you think, brother? he asked the Earth Toa. Onua smiled, though there was a hint of weariness in his eyes. I think, he said, that we have won an important battle, and of that we can be proud. But there is more to come. Tahu nodded, his green fading as he gripped his fire sword more tightly. Yes, Onua was right. He could feel it, burning in his mind like a half-remembered dream. There was much more to come. End of the book, Tale of the Toa